Auntie, Auntie. 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 <laughs> right. So they're the same family of instrument. Okay. So in Europe, um, after the Renaissance, you have the Baroque period. Okay. And in in between that transition from the Baroque period or from the Renaissance to the Baroque period. Uh, we're talking 1300s, 1400s, 1500s. You've got a lot of instrument makers that are doing a lot of experimenting with instrument types. And so there's a family called the viol family, viol da gambas. And so the viol family was the main string instrument throughout Europe for quite some time. And um, da gamba is, was just Italian for to play with the thigh like the cello does. Um, so even the tiny... Uh, violin-sized viols were played on the knee and their bow. And so the, the function of these viol instruments were to accompany the vocal line. Because in the Renaissance and in the church, it was all vocal music that was the main music. And so these string instruments developed so that we could play the same line as the vocalist and just help support them and make it you know dance um, music too and folk music. Um, so for a while, the viol family was the main string instrument group, and then the violin came around. And instead of having gut strings, it had these metal strings, and um, it had uh, instead of the bows used to be arced like this, right? But the violin bows concave like this, and you get a different type of flex. You see the flex of that? So it was more powerful. It was louder. You could do uh, more virtuosic technique, and uh, it just was the fact that the violin came around, and that family started to replace the viol da gamba family. Okay, and so the cello for a while it was violin and viola, which is just a little bit lower pitched than the violin, and then cello. And cello was the lowest um, bowed string of the violin family for a little while. Do you guys know the, the double bass, the really big one? Yeah. Um, so that's the standing double bass, or the contrabass. Eventually, that came around and became the lowest of the string instruments for the violin family. But it's simply uh, mimicking the voice ranges, right? You have, um, in choir music in the West, you have soprano, alto, tenor, and bass. You have the two female parts, the high and the low, and then the two male parts, the high and the low depending on your voice range. And so the cello actually encompasses the entire human voice range. The lowest males can sing down here, and the highest females you know, can sing up there. And so it just fits the whole range of the voice. And um, that's basically it, so that we could, you know, we have the different registers of instruments so that we can match the voice. And have those parts. Is that
guys noticed that was a little bit different for this suite, just right off the bat. So many. So many what? Uh, notes. Notes? Yeah. What about the character? What is that? What do you guys, how do you think that the whole rest of the Fest. suite? What did you say? Fest. Fest? I don't know what the what is it? Fest. Fest. Fast? Oh, you think that the whole the whole second suite will be fast? <laughs> or the first suite was faster than the second suite? You don't know? It's a, uh, it's, sorry, I'm just going to move this. It's a lot darker. Does it sound darker to you guys? More thick? As far as its tone, its color? Hmm? Tone is <laughs> it uh, this one always has a, a little bit more of like a blue type of a color when I hear it. It, it, it just, it's almost a little bit more like midnight. Um, versus the first one, it's in a, it's a pretty happy key, right? It's a very, like a, a bright smiling sound. Versus this one, it's a little bit more meditative. Uh, reflective, kind of like almost like you're brooding and you're, you're thinking really hard about something or feeling something that's deep. So just a totally different character from the, the first suite. Um, I'll put, just play a little bit more so you guys can kind of hear how it continues to go a little bit differently. Um,